I said, oh, nothing of value in the bag, just an old laptop on my clothes. So we came back, both bags were gone. His presentation was on the laptop. So I know how he felt, because that's what happened to me two years ago. I had no presentation. So I'm sorry. Well, we should blame Paul, because he's a native. <laughs> he should know about the <laughs> Now, we've had a parallel development of uh, GL4ES by Cast1E. Cast1E e. Cast is the developer that I've done your report for OS4. He's doing sterling work as well, and now at all the conference. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Can you take that off the top of the screen, please? Uh, oh, good. Uh, it obviously complements the walkthrough the Nova as well. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that uh, the Radian Polaris graphics driver has been developed. And we'll tell you more about that in a minute. Hans has done Sterling will work on that. So we now supporting the latest uh, uh, graphics cards, or a subset of the latest graphics cards. And just before I left from New Zealand, uh, the latest version, the free version of uh, Enhancer software, version 1.4 was released. So that's really good to news too. Um, one of the things that's uh, it's nice to cross off the list is the uh, uh, onboard Ethernet driver for the X5000. And so that was delivered to uh, X5000 customers via the, the updating utility that's built into the, the Enhancer software. So uh, if you've got the Enhancer and you've got the updating, you'll be getting regular updates via updating. So that, that keeps our customers up to date with uh, files and bug fixes. Uh, new firmware was written for the uh, Amiga One at X5000 20 and 40. Uh, X5000 and 40, uh, with support for both OS 4 final edition, or final edition, and Morph OS. So if you've got an X5000 and you want to go that route, you can now run Morph OS 3.11. I mean, actually, apart from some graphics cards issues, you have to downgrade gra graphics cards. It actually runs very, very well. So if you're a more force guy, you can try it out. If you're a bigger OS4 guy, you can try it out. It's up to you. We swing both ways. <laughs> um, the, uh, we now have two on, uh, on board Ethernet drivers for the A1222. Um, and one developed uh, by uh, Randy Olson for Aeon, and one developed by James Kruger for Aeon. Uh, sponsored by AOTL, um, so that's really good. And so the, uh, the official OS4 one will be the uh, uh, James driver, and it's, uh, it's got certain benefits that it supports both of the ports on the, on the table, uh, but uh, I'm really pleased to see that. Um, we've actually shipped boards, and a few more to go out, to beta testers for the uh, Amiga uh, X5040. Uh, I've actually got one myself, and it's my it's the computer I use daily now. Uh, it was the X1000, and it was the X5020, and now it's the 40. And it's, you know, apart from a few minor issues, uh, I think the X5000 always forward and runs really well. Uh, uh, hopefully, Michael Salacido confirmed that. Michael, can you confirm that? Absolutely. He said it runs really brilliantly. Oh no, absolutely, he said, sorry. <laughs> we still got that, uh... yeah, yeah. Yeah. I talked about the Enhancer software briefly, but the Enhancer software was released in November 2015. There's been a, a number of free updates. There'll be one further free update for uh, Enhancer, and that will be December 2018. And that will be the last uh, uh, update for version 1.5, or version 1. And uh, we're now moving on to, the, and that will be coming out before Christmas, so you're all, any enhancer uh, owners, we got to download that free of charge, using up data, and happy Christmas, that's great. But obviously we haven't stopped working on enhancer, and the, we have an Enhancer 2 that's been going on alongside in parallel with Enhancer 1. And uh, this uh, version 2 has had 19 full beta updates today. The last one came out just before I left. 
And this, what does that do? Well, this brings in all those new uh, drivers we were talking about last year uh, for the regular user. Beta testers have been using this, uh, Aon beta testers have been using this for quite a while. But uh, we're bringing out the new Radian HD driver, uh, the RX driver uh, for the Polaris graphics cards, the new Walk 3D Nova and Walk 3D SI, uh, all the utilities that, that improve the uh, OS4 experience. And for the first time ever uh, on any Amiga OS hardware, uh, hardware monitoring API. It's the first time that's that. So we can look at the, the CPU, the temperatures, the, the, the health check for the Amiga for the machine you're running on. Now, what coming? Other systems have had that for a long time. It's been mainstream. But it's the first time Amiga OS 4 will have it as an API and not a clutch. Before that comes out, that, that should be out early next year, we are going to release the Enhancer Graphics Upgrade Pack, which will give you all those features uh, for the advanced uh, uh, graphics capability. Uh, and this will be, uh, if you buy this pack, you'll get a free update to the version two, the full version two when it's released. So details on this will be released in the next few days. We'll probably use this out, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this out because not many people have seen what uh, the, uh, the uh, advanced software can do. The Radian HD driver, you know, breaking that 256 megabyte uh, graphics RAM barrier. We announced it last year, it didn't seem to be much news, which quite really surprised me. So the first time any Amiga OS machine has been able to use more than 256 <laughs> megabytes of the virtual graphics memory, or the extended graphics memory. So you, you can actually use the graphics of the GPU to do the work. And not rely on the operating system all the time to and the CPU and, and below that 256 um, million barriers. And you probably saw a lot of people bought Spencer from uh, X. And this is actually Spencer running on a, a 5040. And you can see we're using 89% of 89 megabytes of the, the GPU RAM. Uh, and 59 megabytes of the, let's call it the, the, uh, the graphics RAM the, under the OS4. So uh, it's, it's really, it makes games that really are uh, graphics RAM hungry able to run. Um, so Spencer was the first game developed really for this. And n 20 x has said all the other games they developed will use the multi walk through the other features. And with the continuous work by Daniel Mosner uh, and, uh, and others, and the work that uh, has been doing a walk through the you know, to expand it and extend it, that's going to really you know, help the developers going forward. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we're calling for beta uh, testers for the uh, Enhanced Software Classic version. Uh, we're ready now to do a real beta test program for that. And so if you're really interested in helping uh, create the Enhanced the Classic Software, now's the time to contact us. Enhanced Software at Amiga.org. And uh, this is a, a, we talked about this a year ago. Um, we've been working on it, but now that, that's the time to, to uh, uh, build on it. If you, if you're wondering what's going to go in there, things like um, uh, Media Toolbox, that's on OS4. We now have an OS3 version. So all the rubbish we have with dealing with hard disk drives on OS3 and other sort of solutions, this is now the OS4 virtual converted to OS3. But now the owners of those versions, and now the owners of the toolbox in general. Ah, now, the question about the Amiga 1 A1202. Well, the good news first. The good news is it supports all the latest range in HD and our subscribers. So that's great. It supports the latest Walk 3D and Walk 3D Nova SI drivers. It's great. There are two onboard Ethernet drivers now available. So unlike the X1000, which we still don't have an onboard Ethernet driver, uh, we do have one for the uh, two for the, uh, uh, for the, for the uh, A1222. The firmware has been updated to the same level of the X5000. 
The first one for the XYZ Brazil was uh, with permission of Mark Wilson. Mark, who is a uh, uh, very talented developer, who was uh, who acts as a more for us primarily, but he did work for us on the uh, firmware for the X5000 and it was working on the A12.2 as well. And the board itself, I know it's been a long time. <laughs> we released this board to the, to the developers at the end of 2014. We delivered boards to the beta testers in 2015. The board is actually very reliable and runs well. Um, we are happy to replace a couple of minor onboard components because of obsolescence. <laughs> this was back in 2014, 14, 15. It's now 2018, so we're replacing those. Um, and then we'll, we'll respin the board. Confirm it it's okay, and then we'll go to production. So there's no, there's no, we are doing this board, right? Uh, we are waiting still on the audio volume. Um, I, I thought I had an update for this meeting, but I haven't received the update, so I can't say anything about that. And obviously there will be a file on the OS 4.1, ISO point of the video, and everything's today. But I would I hope to have this by the end of this year, but it's going to be the first quarter next year. So like I would say, he's actually gone further than me. We didn't blame him now, that's good. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting to talk about uh, what uh, the performance of next generation Android systems and next generation systems in, you know, as a total. Um, due to the excellent work by Dan DeLuzzi with Tower 57, um, I thought showing this graph, I loved it because I thought, there we are, we've got a, a, a Power Mac G5, which I was told was the Holy Grail. Of you know, computing. Uh, it's nice to see that the X5000 14 and the X5000 20 blow it away. It's good to see the X5000 blow it away. But it's quite surprising to see uh, <coughs> Daniel's uh, highly optimized SP table is not too far behind either. Okay, that's why I'm on the only more for us. And, and, uh, I don't know where Daniel optimized things more for us for the more for us. I don't know if that's possible in the last time in the But it's nice to know that a power hook, uh, 1.67 gigahertz, is slower than the <laughs> Unity table. Uh, a Mac Mini, an EMAC, 1.2 gigahertz, Mac Mini, 1.4. Uh, the Sample 60, even the respectful. The uh, 44 to 7 and 7460 years. So, at the time, I know that had optimized Tower 57 um, in comparison to the commercial version from Steam. Uh, I understand that we performed very well against X86 versions on Steam. But of course, Danny really put a lot of optimization in to improve the Amiga uh, next generation. Type uh, performance, and you, you want to do more information skip to that. Um, I mentioned last year there will be a free software essentials pack from the developer framework uh, that's been released before Christmas. And we'll have all the libraries, gadgets, classes, the updating utility, the app. So, to allow you to build your software using all of the extra bits and pieces we built into the answer to allow developers to create their own. Uh, to improve their own uh, products and develop faster. So tied in with things like the work James do, and uh, others like Kevin, I think the future for developing the Amiga OS 4 is going to be easier. We've now got to encourage the developers to, to, to develop for our platform. Bring in the guys that were, uh, the guys and women that have worked on it before and get them re-energized into trying to create a product for us. Because without the product, <laughs> Hardware's great, OS4 is great, but without the software, you know, we're kind of lagging behind it, so we need the software. Um, in terms of development, um, Aon, uh, AmigaDevelop.com, Aon uh, runs, now has 50 developers, beta testers, and translators. We are very active. 
So if someone tells you that nothing's going on in the development of the Negro in this whole world, it's not true. It's really active. Uh, we, have, we have Dev Con Coding Jam in June in Cardiff. It's always associated with a code night or two. Um, we have 10 live projects, 10 live major projects ongoing at the moment. And in our SVN, we now have 4,775 commits, and they've grown in day. It's a very active and friendly community. So if you're a developer, or beta tester, or translator, graphic artist, whatever, we're always interested in, in having people help out. So if you want to be involved in joining a dynamic and friendly team, then please contact Enhancer Software at Neva.org. <laughs> we talk about being a next generation. Uh, last last year at the uh, banquet at Abbey West, my grandson was born, my first grand, my grandchild, and I said I was going to make him a vegan. <laughs> I'm getting used to the bone ball colours already. Uh, so, is this the real next generation of vegan? I don't know. So, what I'd like to do now is uh, just throw it up to questions, and uh, I'll try my best to answer them. Thank you.
so I, I guess my question is, if I have one, yeah, right? no, you can upgrade to, to two. But the the components in one will continue to be supported for oh, some oh. time. It will be question. Yeah. yeah. Will you lose the components in one and give two? Two of them include everything that one's got and more. So you're not going to lose that. Uh, it's going to be compatible. It's not a, you know, update or die. You bring it continue to Sure, yeah. I was really excited when I heard Aeon acquired Image Effects, and I was wondering is that one of the active projects or is that something slated for the future? Yeah. That's a good question because we have a number of classes uh, and even titles. I'm very keen, I know I've been saying this before, I'm very keen to see them upgraded and put back on the market. Uh, and uh, we are looking for the authors to work on a number of these packages. Uh, also, there's one of them, Image Effects has launched, uh, Lab Reformies and other. So, uh, uh, the problem is, and this is a problem we have in the new community in general, um, talented, you know, talented people who are artists, but they don't have the time to do the work. Uh, there's no materials on the platform to do work. So that's why I'm pretty pleased to see the developer tools doing the improvement uh, to make it much easier. Because really, to develop for a new artist for, um, you have to jump through all the hoops in the moment, and you have to jump through all the hoops. And if you didn't do it all the time, you're used to all of those hoops. If you're coming in from the outside, I would say it's almost yeah. impossible. Challenging. Challenging. Uh, challenging. The word is challenging, and it was game filled. So, so we want to make it easier. So, uh, and, but having said that, we do have technical developers you know, in where we get a part of the you know, last eight hours, and we've got last four or eight people. And uh, if you need just to incentivize them, they will work. So the next one for me, I don't know, is either uh, image effects or land of the is a big Would Aeon consider re-releasing the existing 68 game version to the software that you acquired so people can get their hands on an official package as opposed to having to find it elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> the question was, uh, would we re-release the classic media titles that we have? Uh, rather than uh, let people search in that square for them. Uh, yes, it's a good idea. Um, and someone asked me about, or asked Matthew about this thing. And Matthew looks after the media professor team, so uh, it's not the one I have to uh, have a look at it. Hey, Trevor, from the internet, I'll be able to leave your office. Oh! What's the update on leave your office? Okay, right. Uh, actually, I was a few. From um, uh, Hans, uh, Hans Jorg, yet and yet, the e library. Now, Hans has been working on the office as a part time project for us for the last two years. Um, halfway through, after the first beta was released, um, there was a few insights or problems with the office on the OS 4. The OS 4 just did not have certain things that were needed. And it was, it was just impossible to do. However, um, LibreOffice 5 was uh, recompiled in, uh, and put together for Android. And Android sort of had to make now changes in, in the LibreOffice for Android, which made it much easier for us now to under OS 4 to play the LibreOffice version. So for the last year, we've been working, we've been working everything to LibreOffice 5. And then we're now at the stage where we were the liberal office for before we had these uh, insurmountable problems. And we were going to have a problem with the OS 4. But now we're back to create the first picture again. So it's been a long, long process. I never expected it to take us long, but when you have one man working part time uh, on a project that's as massive as the liberal office, it's amazing he's got as far as he's got. And so what would I expect to see the bit? There's a few beta testers already, but I expect to see another update. Uh, I would think really uh, in, in January. So we have to start updating it. Will I ever make any money on the office? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so another question from the internet. Uh, 
is Aeon engaged in web browser development that will support Google Docs? Right, web browser development Google Docs. Well, um, it's interesting that it's uh, obviously <laughs> kind of supports Google Docs.
in the sundry store. They have a little store here where you can buy some of this wine. So that's going to be lunch provided here uh, in approximately 37 minutes. Uh, so about 12:30, uh, we're having uh, the pizza delivery out there. And uh, in the meantime, go visit our vendors. Uh, talk to Trevor and ask him more questions. Uh, and uh, so we will see you hopefully for lunch at Pizza out there at 12.30. And Jamie is going to be presenting at 1 o'clock after lunch. So, uh, go enjoy the show. Thank <laughs> you. 